Welcome to the Journey Church message replay. If you were not able to be with us live when this message was delivered, or you just want to take a deeper dive into God's Word, this is where you can find the latest message delivered here at Journey. Be sure to click the subscribe button on the podcast service you are listening to or the video channel you are watching right now. That way you won't miss anything because you will be notified every time a new message is uploaded. Our goal here at Journey is to help you discover your real life purpose in Jesus so that you can make a difference in your world. This message you're about to hear is going to both encourage and challenge you to do just that. If you like what you hear, then go ahead and hit that like and share buttons below and leave us a comment as well. There are more ways to contact us down in the notes section. If you want to know more about us, then you just have to search Journey Church Eva online and on social media. Now. Get ready and let God speak to you through this message today. But before we do, let's just go ahead and begin to pray. Father, we thank you for what we've already experienced through this dynamic of worship, Lord. The atmosphere being set for the Word of God to come forth now. And uh, everybody say this with me. Say, change our lives according to your Word. In Jesus' name, say, amen. amen. All right. How many is enjoying 21 days of prayer and fasting? Amen. If you're not in doing that, go ahead and jump in at any time you like. And it's just a, uh, it is a life-altering situation when you do pray and fast for 21 days. And again, you're, you're fasting from something, but you're also fasting to something. Everybody say, to something. Actually, you're fasting to someone, and that's the presence of the power of God in your life. Amen? Amen. But last week, we started a, a, a three-part series to start the year off with. And I got this word of the Lord as I was praying about a couple, two or three months ago coming into 2024, what was it going to look like if I got a word of the Lord, and I was praying in the spirit when I I received this message, and so we'll go ahead and put that word up. In 2024, we are to have a capacity for fullness. Everybody say capacity for fullness. We're to have that. Why? For the things that God is going to make available and do. It's not just going to be available. He's going to get it done with or without us. Amen. Amen. I, I just choose to say, let's participate. Amen. Okay. He's going to make it available and do to and with those who make room for him. So how much capacity do you have this morning for Jesus in your life? How much capacity do you have for his ways, his word, his, his anointings in your life? What is your capacity for God? Have you made room for him? Are you going into 2024 saying, you know what? I want more Jesus this year than I had last year. And we talked just a little bit about it last week. If you want something you've never had, you've got to do things you've never done. And so maybe give up something in order to have more Jesus. That, sorry, you never say, that's always a good thing. Amen? And so to kind of illustrate that this week, I've got three different size cups. Now this cup has a capacity, and this cup has a capacity, and this cup. They all have a maximum capacity, Amen? This one has a smaller amount, this one kind of a medium size, and this one a larger size. Now, wherever you're at in the spectrum of life with your, with your capacity for God, with your capacity for whatever it is in your life, you've got capacity for. Some of us, the drama level needs to be here, but it's actually here, unfortunately. Some people, your tolerance for pain and putting up with others has been here, and it needs to be here. Matter of fact, it needs to be out there. Okay, uh, but, but, but the reality is, now, and even if you've got, this is your capacity right now, this may not be full. This may just have a couple of drops in it. It may be up to here. It could be to here, but this thing does not reach capacity until it's overflowing. Amen? And so what we're after today with the move of God and what God wants to do in 2024 is for you not just to be here, but be here be here, and then whatever's after that. Because I got news for you. Look at your neighbor and say, there's always more. There's always so much more. But I believe, along with the Word of God, you have to see it before you get it. Amen? So this morning, we'll talk a little bit about what are you seeing for 2024? Well, where do you see your life? Where do you see what God has you doing? Where do you, what's your capacity to see? Everybody say, see. see. Seeing is so important. If because I really, I'm one of those that believe if you can't get a vision for it, it's going to be very hard for you to obtain it. And when you stop looking to see the things of God and seeing your life pro- progress with God, then that's usually when your life doesn't progress with God much beyond what it is now, maybe. And how do you know, again, th- there is so much more? 
And a lot of you, you know, when you, when you, when you, when you say you're at this cup right here, but you've got a vision to be here. Now, many times you go from here to here, but you've got to go through here. And that can be a, a, a lonely place. That can be a disappointing place because your, your vision's to here, but sometimes you only get to here and you start here. But you've got to have the vision for here. It, it don't matter if you've got one drop in this cup. I want your vision to be for the biggest and largest thing you can believe God for. Amen? And so, you know, again, a lot of times it takes one of, again, we talked about it last week, it takes one of the most precious things that we have to see these visions come to pass, and that's time. And because we're such a microwave generation, we want it now. But sometimes it don't happen in our now. See, what, what you're sitting in and what you're seeing right now in this church, it, it hadn't always been this way. 20 plus years ago, as a matter of fact, in September of 2002, I walked into this place for the first time. And when I walked into, let me see if I can get it about right. Okay, I think right there is the line. The stage actually stopped right here. And there were steps all the way down the front, all the way across, all nothing but steps. And so the band was all back in through here. And these walls were a light pink color. <laughs> there was hunter green carpet <laughs> with a burgundy border. He said, some of y'all are here. Y'all remember those, 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 those fantastic days. None of this was up here. The, the, the background, the, the, the walls back here were a off-white pink, too. You didn't see a screen here or here. You saw some of the lighting, but not all the lighting. The ceiling was white. The chairs were green and burgundy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and when I walked in and I saw that, I'm like, Lord, this cannot be. <laughs> and it cannot stay. But how I many know we didn't have this overnight? Right. I sit right back there in the corner and I begin to have a vision of what this place should look like or what God was calling us to build here. I seen, I seen the stage being brought out. I saw, the, I saw two more screens. I saw the screens way back then, 20 years ago. I saw the blacked out wall. I saw the blacked out ceiling. I saw the different color. I saw the neutral colors versus the modern day colors. But I saw it before it ever came to pass. And when I saw it, I wanted it now. But I didn't get it now in my timing. So what did we have to do? We had to go to work. We cast a vision and said, this is what we can be, and this is where God's leading us. And then a lot of you begin to come, and you begin to come along, and you begin to see it before you could even tangibly see it. And then I can remember the day when we brought the stage out. We, didn't, we couldn't do it all. We brought just one little section of the stage out. A little like catwalk out on the front of it. Now, and then we're like, we, we've arrived. <laughs> and then I can remember the day when we came in here and we were ripping up green carpet. It was glorious. <laughs> what a day that will be. I feel like I saw Jesus more that day than ever. That green carpet got gone, and when the new carpet came in, and the, chair, the chairs got gone, and the new chairs came in, and, and then, then watching the, the, the crew come in and put up two screens, it's like, wow, how are we going to do this? We're going to have three projectors now. <laughs> and then when the crew came in to paint the ceiling, that was fun. But you got to watch the vision begin to happen. But you know how it happened? It's because we didn't stay here. It's because we had a vision. We, we, we built in to start to have capacity for God to move to what he wanted moved in here. And can I tell you, God's just still getting started with us Amen. as a church. Amen. Yes. I can remember we had no money to support missionaries, but we went ahead and started supporting them by faith. And now we support missionaries all over. We give money away constantly left and right. And, and I'll tell you about something here in a few weeks that you, you, this church just was able to do. But I'm not going to share that with you today. But since the beginning, I've always had a prayer over Journey Church. From day one, I've been praying this over Journey Church, which means I've been praying this over you and your family because this is my heart's desire. This is what I said, Lord, if I can't see this in the people, I know it's not going to be able to happen. And so the, the prayer is, if you've ever been through growth tracks, you're familiar with this, but Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, and I'm going to be reading it to you out of the Message Bible because that's more how along the lines I pray. 
Now, what, what Paul is doing here, he's writing to the church of Ephesus and thanking God for that church, amen? And I thank God for Journey Church. I don't know about you, but I'm very thankful, amen, come on. I'm very thankful that God's got a vision in this house that's bigger than any of us, amen? And that we've got a capacity, hallelujah, come on. But he, so he's saying, I thank God for you, but I'm going to do more than just sit back and thank God for you. I'm going to speak into your life. I want to see these things happen to you. And these are exact my, 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 my desires and passions for you as a church, for me as part of this church. Number one, I'm going to do more than just be thankful. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm not going to just be thankful. I'm going to ask. And I'm not going to ask just anybody. I'm going to ask the God, our Master Jesus Christ, the God of glory. Yeah. Amen. I want you to know I'm no, I don't pray to some identity out there in the middle of nowhere. I know it is who I'm praying to about you in this church. It is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God. Amen. Amen. So uh, we're praying to that. And I want him to make you and I together intelligent. Yes. Somebody said we need to be smarter than the enemy. Yes. We need to be intelligent and discerning about all this stuff. But no, the first thing I want you to have intelligence and discernment about is knowing Christ personally in your life. Yes. That's the win. That's the win. That's the eternal win. We were sharing last night with some people. I said, I celebrate two wins when I watch them happen in people's lives. The first win I love to celebrate is when a hand goes up and says, I want to accept Jesus as my Savior. Yay, baby, that's an eternal win. What's the second win you like to celebrate? When I begin to watch that person's life be transformed by the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. When I begin to watch them seek after the things of God and I begin to watch their life go through and they begin to settle their yesterdays, their hurts, their habits, and their hangups, and they begin to discover their purpose and they begin to know Jesus Christ not as a religious figure but as an intimate personal relationship with them. And then when their life goes to making a difference for the kingdom while they're on earth. Yeah. That's my second win. When I can look and see you are out there impacting other people's lives, you're impacting your work area, you're impacting your school, that's a win in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And that's been part of the vision here all along. It's not just to build a house full of church members who gather, but a church body who scatters yeah. and goes out there and shares the gospel and makes a difference wherever you're at. Amen. But it didn't come to right here overnight. It started here, but it started somewhere. And no matter where you're at with your vision or your calling, know this right here. It doesn't matter. You may be in the middle cup. You may already be in this cup, but maybe it's not overflowing yet. But God wants to overflow you this year if you'll make room for him. Amen? Amen. But now watch this. We go on here to make you intelligent, okay? And I want your eyes focused. Everybody say eyes focused. Eyes focused. Why? I want it clear. Why? So that you can see exactly what it is he, God Almighty, is calling you to do. Touch your neighbor and say, oh my gosh, he wants us to do something. No, it ain't me wanting you to do something. This is the Word of God. And I want you to see what, because let me tell you something. Nobody's ever been called to be saved and just sit. You are all are supposed to be activated in your purpose of why you're breathing, why you're where you're at, who you're with, and what you're around. You're supposed to have influence. So that your eyes can be focused and clear so you can see exactly what it is he's calling you to do. And that you can grasp the immensity of the glorious way of life that he has for his followers. I want you to understand this thing we call Christianity and salvation. It's not just a club to belong to. It's a life to live for the glory of God. And when you're not living it for the glory of God, my friends, you are living way beneath your maximum potential God has in each and every one of you. But you've got to have a capacity for fullness of him. Because there'll be things that want to come into your cup to take up space to keep you from getting to where God wants you to get. Can I have a better amen there? Amen? Amen? amen. 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 Your eyes need to be focused and clear where you can see what God's calling you to. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know what God's calling me to. Well, I can tell you, the Bible will tell you if you read your Bible. You're supposed to be sharing Christ in your life. You're supposed to be living in accordance to, with the Word of God. Come on, guys. It doesn't take a genius to figure this thing out. It's not that hard. Amen? Amen? So <laughs> which cup would you say you're, you're in this morning with your capacity for the things of God? Well, I got a little God. I go sometimes on Sunday, and I got a little God. Well, I'm faithful. I go to Wednesday nights. <laughs> Come on. I'm a Wednesday night person. Or I'm just a servant of the King with every opportunity I can have. 
I'm faithful. I'm giving. I'm kind. I'm generous. I look for times to serve. I look, God can just fill this up and overflow all he wants. Amen? So which cup are you at this morning? Now, let me ask you this. Um, can you get a vision bigger than the cup you're in? I hope you can. And let me just say it like this. I hope you better. I really hope you better do that because I think in 2024, you're going to need a vision bigger than you are. Because God wants to do some great things because there's such an attack to the church there's such an attack to the way of life right now that we're going to need a big God to do some big things. But how many know we've got that big God that does big things? Can you have an amen there? But you've got to get a vision for that bigger God. You've got to get that vision. And I didn't know how to get to where all this was at. I'll be honest with you. This was outside my range. But I trusted God. But here's the thing. I just didn't sit back and trust God. Come on. There's a whole big difference in seeing something and trusting God for it, but it took work. It took believing beyond your abilities. It took going after other things to try to help you and, and getting some mentors in my life that begin to speak that vision of faith in my life. And that's why it's important to have surrounding yourself with people a vision that says, no, you can do this. No, it's coming. Don't worry about it if it didn't. Do you, do you understand that there are still Bible prophecies still to be fulfilled today? So if the prophecies of all the Word of God hasn't come to pass, why do you think your Word's got to come within 24 hours? There's two sides to a prophetic Word. There's giving to the prophetic Word, and there's the receiving it and doing your part to make it happen. Again, I'll give this illustration. If God prophesied to me and said He wants me to stand behind that little table, thank you, Lord, I'll receive it. But as long as I hang out here, that Word's not coming true. But if I can take it upon myself to see that vision, to know the Word of God, to see the vision, now I can move. I can do my part, and I can get over here in the prophetic Word of God and the vision that come to pass. Yeah. Amen? Or I could stood over here and said, God, I know the Word, and I know what you said this year, but it's just not happening. I ain't behind that table. Amen. God don't want the table to move. He wants you to move. Amen. Amen? So when we get the Word, when we get the vision, know there's a work and a process that goes along with that. Matter of fact, if you turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 26, once your eyes begin to get open and you start sharing the vision where other people can catch it or maybe you encourage them in their vision and help them catch theirs, there's a lot to that. Can I have a better amen there? Amen. <coughs> you ought to be willing to pay it forward. When I come out of this cup into this cup, I ought to be willing to pour back. Amen. And when I come out of this cup to this cup, you ought to be willing to pour back. Yes, Amen? Amen? Pay it back. Pay it forward. Pay it. Give it away. Don't just keep it. Matter of fact, in Acts chapter 26, we're going to start reading here in just a moment in verse 14, Paul is giving his account of his life being radically changed by the presence and the power of Jesus Christ. Now, many of you know Paul who was Saul, so God changed his name to Paul, was a person, a very educated man, highly educated, very sharp, could pronounce all the biblical words correctly, just a sharp feller. But he was a persecutor of Christianity and Christians. He was having them killed, and he was on his way to a town called Damascus to have more Christians arrested and killed and prosecuted and, and beat up and, and scorned and all that. And God takes him and his whole contraband, it's going with him, and just... Puts it on them, amen. He has an encounter with God, and the light comes out, shines around them, knocks them off their horse. And then he has this encounter here, Acts chapter 26, start reading in verse 14. And when we had all fallen to the ground, now how many fell in the presence of the Lord? Oh. Now a lot of people say, well, I don't believe in falling out in the presence of God. Well, take it up with Paul and everybody that was traveling with Paul, they hit the ground in the presence of God. Amen. Just saying, sometimes when you get into that manifested presence of God, sometimes you can't stand on your own two feet. I've been there, done it. You ain't going to convince me any otherwise, okay? And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul. I don't know if it was like that or not, but I just thought that sounded cool. <laughs> Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, this is Jesus speaking to him. And I love Paul's reaction. Or excuse me, Jesus goes on and says, it is hard for you to kick against the goads. So Paul says to Jesus, who are you, Lord? Question mark. 
Are you the Lord? Right. Amen. Good answer. I mean, that's the way I would have probably responded. And, and he said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. But here's what Jesus instructed him to do. Now, I want you to pay close attention here. Are you ready? I am Jesus who you persecute, but rise, stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. Everybody say purpose. We're going to stop right there. He says, I have come to appear to you for this purpose. This means that Paul's life, if he heeds the word of God, he's fixing to have to have a whole new capacity for what God's calling him into. Now, guys, let me tell you something. God did not birth you into the earth without a purpose. So if you will come this year and seek the Lord's word, seek his face, seek his presence, and seek his purpose for your life, your capacity is fixing to have to shift whether you like it or not. Because you will not go into 2024, into this year, with what God wants you to do with the same capacity you've worked in. You're going to have to have more capacity for God this year. You're going to have a better amen. So Paul is fixing to have to shift his priorities. He's fixing to have to shift his time. He's fixing to have to shift what's important to him. Amen? He's fixing to have to give up some things to get some things. Are you with me? So he says, rise, stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this. Everybody say purpose. purpose. Here's the purpose. I am going to make you a minister and a witness. Now watch this. Both of the things which you have seen, everybody say have seen, have seen, and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. Leave that up there. Do you see a capacity shifting here? He says, not only, I'm going to make you a minister of the gospel. Now, by the way, we're all ministers of the gospel in here if you're born again. Every single one of us. So if you need a title, there you are. You're a minister so-and-so. There you go. You have the ministry of Jesus Christ. Well, where's your pulpit? Wherever you're at is your pulpit. Amen. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but I, had, I used to have one of those clear yes. plexiglass lectern podium pulpit things. Some people love them. I hated it. I didn't like it. It, just, that's, it was too frou-frou for me. As you can tell, I'm kind of a simple guy. But, but whatever, and I, I told people, I said, listen, if... if if you think that, because they, they were real cooling in back then. And a lot of people still love them today, and they're, they're fine, nothing against them, it's just not me. I said, if it'll get you to where you will do what God wants you to do, you can have this pulpit. It means nothing to me. You can have it. Take it, please. And I actually ended up giving it away to somebody. It was another pastor. He came in, oh, I love that. I said, you love that, you can have it. He said, do what? I said, yeah. He said, how much? I said, just take it. I got online, ordered me a $35 little table. I got to share you the story. We had a secretary here. My secretary at the time was an elderly lady named Miss Phyllis Beauvais, a precious woman of God, a widow woman, just took such good care of me and the church and, and everybody, and she was fantastic, but she, she was an older southern hospitality woman, just full of God and very proper and trim, and this table came in, and I didn't pay no attention when I ordered it. It was just cheap on, the, on, on, on Amazon, and it came in and it said pub table. <laughs> Miss Phyllis looks at that. She said, oh, pastor, look, this is a pub table. And I'm like, okay, Joey, you got to think quick. I said, yes, ma'am, that's what it says. I said, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to take what the enemy meant for evil. We're going to turn it for good because that's going to mean in this house preaching unlimited Bible. <laughs> she goes, oh, that's good. Thank you, Lord. So, so it's about preaching the unlimited Bible here at the pub table. <laughs> that didn't cost you nothing extra. But when you've got a purpose, it's not so much as what you're seeing now, but things he's going to show you. And for the things he's going to show you in the places he wants to take you in your marriage, in your family, your career, your church, your servitude, whatever it is you've got, he wants to take you to here but you ain't seen here yet. But that's okay. You need to get a vision for it anyway. And then don't be upset when the vision doesn't look exactly like what you thought it would all the time either. Amen. Can I have a better amen with that? Amen. Just get there with what you think it's going to look like and then let him build it. It'll be much better than anything you've ever done. Can I have a better amen there? Amen. So it's not about just what you've seen 
and of the things which I am yet to reveal to you. Going to verse 17, he says, I'm going to deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles and from whom I now send you, which he's going to go to the Gentiles. Now there's a purpose behind it. Again, we're talking his purpose. I'm going to show you what you've seen, but I'm going to show you things you haven't seen. I'm going to send you to places where you shouldn't even really be going to the Gentiles for a purpose. Everybody say a purpose. Watch what the purpose is. Next verse. To open their eyes. To open their eyes. In other words, to give them a vision of something they don't believe is for them. Because the Gentile believers wasn't Jewish. And therefore, they didn't have no access to what they thought the Savior was going to be. But because of Jesus, ain't going to leave nobody out. He says it's for the Jew first, but then the Gentile also. And I'm a Gentile, and you're a Gentile probably here today too. But you know what? I'm grafted into the Jewish family by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And thank God he came to the Gentiles like us and offered us no, no different salvation than what they have. Amen? Amen. 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 So he says, in order that you can turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Talking about Jesus there. So in other words, here's somebody that their vision and capacity was to kill Christians and snuff Christianity out has an encounter with Jesus Christ, and now has a new vision, has to have new capacity to lead other people to their new capacity in life. And guys, if he'll do it with Paul, he'll do it with you. It may not look just like what Paul done in his same things, but it will not be no less of importance to the people you're around. Amen? And it doesn't matter if it's just one person. If it's just one person God's put you on earth for, you fulfill that call. And you get that one person in the kingdom for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. But Paul says, he says, he's telling Paul here, I want you to show them their new capacity for Jesus. Because they've been told they can't come in because they're not Jews. He says, I'm going to tell you, it, it, they're, they, they're welcome. And how many know that went against the Jewish traditions? And that's why Paul was being threatened to be killed and, and shipwrecked and snake bit and all this other stuff. Lord have mercy, Jesus. So the next time you're feeling like you're not qualified... The next time you're feeling like well, your past is too bad, I don't think anybody in here been murdering people lately. <laughs> Just checking. Just raise your hand up if you've murdered a few people here in the last few months or weeks. Or... So that's, you know, that's, you're not that bad. <laughs> now maybe you've done some things, murders. How many <laughs> how many's murdered somebody in your mind in the last year? <laughs> All right, there's some hands. There's some honest people, okay? You've killed them right there, man. Bam! But you didn't follow through, so that's what we're working, okay? You're one step ahead of Paul. That's pretty good company, guys. You're ahead of Paul. Paul was actually doing what he thought about doing until he met Jesus. And then he became a murderer of the devil. He began to do as good a job for God as he was doing for Satan. Amen? So the next time you feel like you're, you can't and you shouldn't and you're not worthy enough and you're not good enough, go ahead and put up the next note. Let me tell you this right here. Everybody say, no matter. No matter where you've been or what you've done, when you make room for Jesus, he will change your world. And he'll change the world around you. Come on, yeah. Because he knows when he gets you, he gets your sphere of influence if he's really got you. I want you to think about that just for a moment. Look around in this place. We're about at capacity now. We're getting closer and closer to capacity. And don't worry, we're working on a plan. Okay. We're, we're, we're all, I'm already ahead of the game. It's okay. We got a plan. We're, and we're constantly working on a plan. But we're at about capacity now. That don't mean we're going to stop. It just means we're going to go further and make it bigger and better for the glory of God. Amen. But he doesn't want it to do it just for us. He wants us to reach people outside these walls. He wants us to reach people that we're, we're around and we have influence with. And if every person in here today, just today, set their mind and said, you know what, I'm going to get at least one family in church this year, then my job would become twice as hard. And I'm okay with that. And I, I, I welcome that. But I'd have to go to thinking and implementing a lot faster. And I'm okay with that. Try me. See if you, see if you can break me. <laughs> Amen? 
Why do I not worry about it? Because I'm already seeing out there. I didn't wait till we got here to see out there. Are you listening to me? So many people, you just live for the vision of what you got up with this morning. And I'm telling you, you need to get a vision. I got a vision for way out there. I have a vision. I have a vision for where we're at now. I have a vision for where I see in three to five years. I have a vision I see where we're in 10 to 15, 20 years. You think you're still going to be around at that time? Around and kicking high, baby. Just getting started. But you've got to see it before you'll ever see it come to pass. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but again, you've got to see yourself, not just circumstances. You've got to see yourself in this capacity. Why can't you? Well, baby, 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 baby. Okay. Now I'm going to draw something here that people in the South ought to know what I'm drawing. That's a what? Circle. A line this way in the middle of the circle and a line this way in the middle of the circle. And what does that make? Target, bullseye. Crosshairs, exactly. Everybody know in Alabama what I'm talking about when I say a crosshair and a bullseye? We all know what that is here in Alabama. Thank you, Jesus. In case you don't know what our church's motto is, we may not be your favorite church, but we can take out your favorite church from a distance. Okay? <laughs> Just kidding. Kind of. But if you take that bullseye, God showed me this in a vision years ago, and I've been using this with marriages. I've been using this in one-on-one -on -one counseling because it, it was spoken first to me because I was giving God excuses. Everybody say excuses. excuses. Well, God, this is why we're not here. Well, God, this is why I don't feel like this has happened yet. Well, God, yeah, 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 yeah. God showed me the target. I said, well, that's cool. I know what that is, but what about it? He said, I want you to take your, every one of your excuses and put them in the bullseye and pull the trigger and kill them. Then I won't have no more excuses. <laughs> exactly. Shut up and get to work. That's what I heard. And so that's what I would tell you. There are no excuses. There's not an excuse one that's going to stand up to say, well, I couldn't because, because we are limitless with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes, <laughs> I know I, I can relate, sometimes you feel like the world is so against you that you can't see yourself even in this cup sometimes. You just see yourself trying to get up out of bed in the morning and face the day. Somebody say, you know, that's right. And it's hard to see yourself anywhere than other than the depression or the oppression that life's thrown on you. But I'm telling you, you've got to get rid of that in Jesus' name. That's not who you are according to Christ. You're the head, you're not the tail. You are above, you're not beneath. It doesn't matter what you feel like. The Bible does not say we walk by feelings. It says we walk by faith. Yes. Can I have a better amen there? Amen. And all of that, all that junk is designed to be in your life where you cannot see yourself even here, much less trying to go here. That's what I'm saying. Started a few months ago on distractions. Don't let distractions get you off your vision. Can I have an amen there, church? Amen. you got to see yourself like God sees you. Even if you don't see it in the mirror, even if you don't see it in, in your everyday life, you got to just start believing by faith what the Bible says about you over what anybody else or even yourself says about you. Amen? amen. Now, real quickly, we're going to go to one more scripture this morning. In 2 Kings chapter 6, we was with Elijah last week. We're going to stay with a little bit of Elijah this week. Everybody say Elijah. Elijah, Elijah was a mighty man of God. He had a double portion anointing in his life. He, he, uh, he spoke into people's lives. He was the prophet of the time. Some people call him the man of God during that time was one of his titles, representing God as his prophet and his servant. But in 2 Kings chapter 6, Syria, the nation of Syria being led by a king, was attacking Israel. Okay, and the king of Syria, who was the chief strategist for the army, he would be getting his military commanders together and said, okay, I want to set up a camp here. We want to surround over here and deploy the troops. And every time that would happen, Elijah, by the Spirit of God, would hear what they, he was saying by the Spirit. And so he would get in contact and speak directly to the king of Israel's army, and he would say, they're going to be here, and they're going to do this, they're going to do that. Boy, ain't that somebody good to have on your side. Yeah. Amen. Now, in case you didn't know, in most of our wars, our government will try to hire mediums to tap into the psychic power. 
And they'd be much better off if they'd just get a band of prophets. Amen. But anyway, anything I'll do to try to win war, but when you don't understand what war is really about, you don't have a clue. <coughs> but so Elijah is prophesying what he hears through the Spirit about the enemy's plans, and he's, he's knocking them out left and right. Now again, think if you're the king of Syria, this has got to be a little aggravating. You're making plans in secret, and you trust in your, your guard and your, your top commanders in the room that nobody, and finally the king of Syria gathers some of his top men and said, okay, which one of y'all is for Israel, not really us? One of y'all here is a traitor. Amen. And they're going like, dude, it's none of us. And so I want to pick that story up in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 12. And it's talking about the king of Syria here. And one of his servants said, it's none of us, my lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet, who's in Israel, he tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. That ought to scare all of us. <coughs> Next verse. So he said, the king said to his servant, go and see where he is that I may send and I'm going to get him. Now the get him there is not the good kind of get him. He's going to get him. And it was told to him, saying, surely he's hanging out at Dothan, Alabama, fixing to go to the beach. <laughs> Doesn't say that. I'm just kidding. That was ad lib. A different Dothan, okay? Different continent. Different country. Surely he is in Dothan. This is where he was at, okay? Look at verse 14. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and what kind of army? Great. Everybody say a great army. He's not playing around with this man of God. He knows the power of God. He has seen the prophetic word of God, how it is destroying his attempts to overtake Israel. He knows this is a cat that's close with God, and he's not sending just like the little seal team in there. He's sending a massive army, a great army of chariots and horses, and he's going to surround Elijah and just take him. Okay? Y'all with me? So they sent a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. Encamp the whole city. So now, when you encamp a whole city around it, that's a big army. Everybody say, that's a big army. That's a big army. Some of you feel the same way. There's been times I've felt the same way. Look out and go like, I don't see no hope. I know my vision, but I'm about to be got right now. And I don't see no way out. I don't see. Everybody say, see. I don't see a way out. I don't see how this is going to work. I don't see how God is going to be glorified in this. I don't see anything but death and destruction. Because you don't have a capacity for the vision of God. No matter what you're facing. So here's the man of God. Here's Elijah. And it says his servant. Now we're not sure if it's the same one a couple of chapters ago, but it probably is, okay. Gehazi, I think. We're not sure though, so I don't, don't take that as a word. But look at the next verse. And when the servant of the man of God, talking about Elijah, arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots, and his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? <laughs> and if you believe he said it like that, I don't think you know. Because when, when you're the, the, the servant to the man of God, they're going to get you too. I mean, they are. They're, they're going to take you out too because you're you the right-hand man. You're the armor bearer. Alas, my master, what shall we do? I believe it was more like, holy moly. Whoa. Dude, what are we doing? We're done. They got us. Look. I see. Can I have a better amen? amen? And then the man of God says something very inspirational to this panicked guy who is, who is seeing the capacity around him. And it's death and capture, torture probably for a while. That's what he's seeing, the capacity for in his life. So the man of God's got to give him some words of wisdom here. Now we're going to go off the left side, we're going to go in a tunnel, we're going to be all right. So he answered the servant and said, uh, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, look, Elijah, I know you the man. I have seen you beat a man. But can you just take a little trip to the door and look? Because I didn't lie to you about we are surrounded by our enemy. I think I'm going to go ahead and be afraid of them. Because right now what I'm seeing with me and you is me and, and you. And I don't see no, nothing else but me and you. And, but I see the Syrian army surrounding us. But how many know the man of God don't lie? Don't be afraid of what's out there. We, we're better off with just us. Now that doesn't make any sense in any level. <laughs> unless you've got a vision from God that brings you into a capacity of faith. Right? So now, here's what Elijah does. The next verse. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord... I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Some of y'all didn't get it. I'm going to preach over here now. This man went from seeing the Syrian army to now he's seeing an army of fire all the way around that army and campused around them. But he didn't see it in the beginning, but Elijah saw it before it ever manifested. Are you with me? The army wasn't there when the servant went out. He just went in and shut the door, started shaking, and he's having it out with the man of God. And the man of God speaks and says, don't worry about it. Don't fear what's with them. Fear what, they should fear what's with us. Go take another look after I pray for you. What did he do? He increased his capacity for fullness. To see the unseen things of God that wasn't unseen to the eye before. Now, he didn't open up his regular vision. He opened up his spiritual sight. And he began to see an army encamped around the army with fire. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. So let me ask you this before we go today. What's God surrounded you? Go put the next note up. What has God surrounded you with that you've not seen yet? Come on, think about that for a minute. What is already probably out there active in your life? You haven't saw it in the physical realm because you're looking strictly at the physical. But if you wish to get spiritual eyes of the Lord and he begin to show you what's encamped around you, I believe you'd get a little excited. I, I believe you'd start looking to expand your territory and believe God for a little bit more this year. I believe you'd start looking for steps to take of what do I need to do now to face this thing? What do I need to do in my part, God, so where I can walk into this thing and let the things of God that hasn't been seen be seen by me and not just be seen but be activated? What haven't you seen yet? Sometimes we can't see this because we don't have a capacity for it. Matter of fact, wherever you're at, let's just take the middle one. Most of us do not have a vision past where we're already at. Because we can't see beyond what we are, what we've done. We can't see beyond looking back to our past and defining our future by our past. Some of you are trapped there today. And I'm telling you, you need to let God pray over you this morning and say... Let me show you in the spirit world what's really around you and what's ahead of you. Because I'm going to go before you and I'm going to melt your enemies like wax in the presence of the Lord. Amen. amen. The promises of God are yes and amen to your life to be successful, to live in that place where no one else can live because they won't go with the things of God. And I see so many Christians who are stuck because they can't see past where they're at. They have no vision for the future. And when they do try to have a vision, when it doesn't come in a week or a day or 24 hours or two, or it looks like something comes against that vision to keep it from happening, you just give up. And you're content to stay where you're at. Or even sometimes we even go backwards. Because we'll go back to what we're familiar with. Come on. We'll go back to what we're familiar with. Now I want to go one more place before we go today. How many of you are stuck this morning 
because you've come into agreement with a generational curse on your family. It's real. In our family, we've, everybody's been divorced. In our family, we have heart problems. In our family, we're always poor. We've never been successful. We're always broke and struggling to pay our bills. In our family, we're just not that smart of people. You know, we're just, we just get enough to get by in life. You've got a poverty mentality. You've got a poverty spirit. You've got a poverty mindset. Not just about money, but life in general because everybody's always done it that way and you've been told that's who you are. Well, this year, I hope you get a capacity to challenge that by the Word of God. Because if God's not said that about you, it doesn't make it final. Did you hear what I said? When God hasn't said that's who you are, then baby, that ain't who you are. Amen? I don't care. Let's hear. Love mom and dad, auntie and uncle, grandma, grandpa, whatever you want to call them. Love them, yes. But I don't receive anything that doesn't line up with the word of God out of any of my genealogy. Amen? I can look up my family tree and see every kind of disease, affliction, and, and outlaw there is. I had a cousin, every time something happened in Coleman, they want to know where Cush was at. <laughs> he was a drunk, he was an alcoholic, he was a clan member, he was all this stuff in a bag of chips. Amen. I broke that curse, I spoke that off of me and my family. Amen. Diabetes, off my family in the name of Jesus. Heart disease, off my family. Somewhere, somebody's got to stand up and say, this is more important. <laughs> Amen? You don't have to go down the same road your everybody else has went down just because they went down it. Right. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Right. Now, it's not about dishonoring your parents or who those, but it's about honoring God. Yeah. Because some of our parents, the reason they walked in it is because nobody told them how to break it. Right. And they didn't know any better. And they just handing that right on into your life. And if you don't know any better, you'll just take that and you'll live your life like that because you think that's all there is and you have no capacity to live beyond sin, beyond the curse, beyond the sin, whatever it may be. Well, we've always been bank robbers in jail. Been in every jail we've ever been into. <laughs> Got a mighty man of God I led to the Lord several years ago. Mighty man of God just ripping up the kingdom right now. And his dad had always been in jail. And when he got to the United States from another country, he said, I've ever, ever state I've been in, I've been in their jail system. And he had. He'd been in every jail, every, every state he's ever been in until he met Jesus in Alabama. And now he goes to jails and ministers to people in jail. He's a phenomenal man of God now. But what did he do? He broke that curse. And some of you, you've limited your capacity because of your family heritage. And I'm here today to tell you, the family of God, the inheritance to that is nothing but life and anointing and power and <laughs> grace and mercy. And an... That's the inheritance I want you to have today. Amen? So let's stand our feet this morning. Now, whatever you do, don't miss next week. Just bow your heads you're here this morning and you've never accepted Jesus Christ that's the first thing you want to make capacity for is make room for Jesus to be your Lord and Savior you may say well I, I grew up in church mom and dad took me hey that's fantastic but did, have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ and asked him to be your Lord and Savior for you see you can't ride your parents coattails into heaven my kids don't get to go to heaven because I'm a pastor they got to go to heaven because they accept Jesus Christ. And that's the only way they're going to get in. You're not going to be able to ride anybody's coattail in. So I don't care how young you are or how old you are, how much church you've attended, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you surrendered your life to him? And do you make room for him? So that's the first one. If you've never done that, real quickly, two things. Number one, you will not join church today. Number two, you're not getting a religion today. You're getting a relationship with the man who died in your place. The man who will open your eyes and show you great and wonderful things. And if that man can't be trusted, then you can't trust anybody. So without any strings attached today, no joining church today, no religion today, just a surrender of your life to Jesus Christ. To say, I want to go to heaven. I'm not going to hell another day of my life in 24. 
If that's you, just lift your hand up right now and say, today's my day. I want to give my life to Christ. Anyone? Maybe online, if you're watching this morning, let us know if you did. But how many would say today, I'm ready to have a capacity to see more. I want my vision to be the vision of God where it can come. And I know for that I've got to make more room for the things of God, which means I can't be distracted this year. So if that's you, just lift your hand and say, Lord, this is my year. I'm coming for more capacity, God. I'm coming and I'm emptying out some things. And I'm not going to be distracted like I have been, Lord. And Lord, I don't, even, I don't know how that vision is going to come to pass. I don't see how the, it's going to be. But Lord, I trust you with what you've shown me, God. Because if you took Paul and you showed him the things he had seen, but things he had not yet seen. And look what all Paul got to see in his lifetime. Things he never would have thought or imagined. But yet every one of them happened because he opened his capacity up to serve God and make room for God. So Father, may we have that experience here on this earth. It's available to every believer. The qualification for this to be in your life is you're a believer and follower of Jesus Christ. That's it. That qualifies you. So now let's get to work. Let's see the visions for yourself, your marriage, your family, your church, your community, your job, your career. Let's see these things start walking into fulfillment. And when the gates of hell try to come against it, give it a word. The gates of hell shall not prevail. They're going to come at you, but they can't prevail, the word of God says. So don't give up, don't give out, and don't give in in Jesus' name. Come on, say this with me. Say, Father, I am here to extend my capacity for you. I want your visions. I want my purpose. I want my life to make a difference while I'm breathing on earth for your kingdom. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth in my life as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, can you give me my hand clap of praise this morning? Thank you for watching or listening to the Journey Church message replay. Be sure to hit the like and share buttons below to help us spread this message. We would love to connect with you. Leave us a comment or for more in-depth conversations about what you just heard, you can contact us by clicking the email link in the notes below. And be sure to check us out online and on social media just by searching Journey Church Eva. Now that you have been empowered by God's Word, go make a difference in your world today.